takes over the Lilac system, and it's our job to stop him. This screen here is random. You can get one of, you can get two or four planets, or oh, between Titania, Meteor, Eladard, and Venom. Macbeth and the Water Planet. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. We do not get in this difficulty. This is something unique as well. These two characters, you don't see anywhere else. The, the story behind these two is simply that these two were rookies. These were rookie characters and they were learning with, with the whole team, but they never, they don't appear anywhere else. So these two are unique to this game. They also start with some blasters, which is why we use both, both of them. And time, start time in three, two, one, let's go. By the way, the good luck. Man. Thank you. So you may be noticing that there are some parts of this game that seem familiar. That is because 20% of the assets in this game were used in Star Fox 64. So even though this was cancelled, some of the assets were reused. So that's Wolf already rid of. Now you may be... there was a... Recently I've been looking at these fights and I have found a way to save just a little bit of time. Beforehand I used to shoot from distance, but now I actually boost towards the enemies because it saves about a quarter of a second in the, in, for the first couple of fights. And later on it saves a lot of time. So this is Titania. This is one of what I call one of the Switch Palace um, planets because there's a on Venom you have to press switches as well, which is why that particular route I coined the Switch Palace route, which you have to press nothing but switches to progress. So exterior, this is absolutely fine. Um, recently, I have also been looking at ways to try and reduce the lag in this game. There are a few strategies that I'm looking into, but they, at the moment, they don't save a lot of time. Also with shield, you can actually click through things. If I have shields in the final area, where we see at, where we go to Andros's place, then I'll show you um, what's known as what is a door column, where where the two doors do not meet correctly, you can flip between them. So on each of the planets and on each of the battleships, you have to wipe out what's known as the core. The core will destroy Andros's power on that planet and liberate it. So yeah, that actually went pretty well. I had to use a shield. I don't normally use a shield on this planet, but I used it for safety. Because I prefer not to die. I would, because if one character dies, it's actually not game over. It's only game over if both characters die, and you can actually change them on the fly. Which is a very unique concept. Anyway, this is the first of the two battleships. What I did there, I actually moved closer to the front of the um, battleship because it actually shortens the cutscene. Yeah, Davida, the um, walker mechanics from this game are what you see in Star Fox Zero. So, that's something in this game that was actually reused in the most recent Star Fox. The no normally here, if I had the right power-ups, I would have used a bomb there, because the bomb saves, saves around about 2 to 3 seconds. But doing it that way, as long as I shoot enough um, shots at it, because you've got to remember, we start with Twin Blasters anyway. So, and hopefully we don't trigger this uh, space fight. No, we didn't. Triggering the space fight is a little bit annoying because space battle can be very, very difficult. Simply because the um, map you see on the top right-hand corner doesn't, doesn't show any correspondence in terms of height. It only shows it in terms of the horizon horizontal rather than height. 
So it will show you where it is in terms of 360 degree, but not if they're higher than you or lower than you. Here is the second planet on this route, Meteor. Now this is where something unique also happens. We can pick up Twin Blasters, but wait! We already have Twin Blasters! With, if you start off with the characters that have Twin Blasters, you can actually double the power of the Twin Blasters. And now the Twin Blasters I have, have double power. So instead of having a single shot that approaches the Twin Shot, you've got Twin Shots with double power. So in a way, it's like a times four. You can also clip into that to save a little bit of time on cutscenes as well. If I can get this. I missed it. There is a trick here where you can actually shoot that before, before it gets around the corner. It saves around about, it saves a decent amount of time, but it is a little bit inconsistent. Because it's based upon where the camera is aimed and also where your shots are aiming. So if it's slightly off, you will not get that. And it's, it's quite a short window. Back it up here. Will we get the bombs? Because that means we can do ambush quickly. Now we've got shields. I can sh I'll potentially shop the uh, door glit the uh, door glit in uh, Andros's stage now. Get rid of this door. As you can see, lag is still a problem in this game. It it kind of because this is this doesn't use the FX chip one. This is using the FX chip two. The same chip that was used in uh, Super Mario World two. And it's why the, you've got upgraded visuals compared to the original. So I it's going pretty well. You can see both of those um, missiles are aiming for Canaria. We ignore those in the speedrun because the space battle takes too long. To take one of those out would take them somewhere between 30... between... I'd say between 20 to 45 seconds. If it's just standard missiles being shot at Corneria, then you can wipe it out pretty quick. But if it's fighters, then you have to, you know, take them out. I can show you the door glitch here, actually. Let's use my shield. There's also pepper coins. If I direct it correctly, break through the middle. Break through the middle. That was actually quite quick clips there, actually. Coolio, coolio. So yeah, what the, what the shield does is it means that the, your hit, the hitbox of the um, of the player, of the fighter, actually is a bit wonky. It makes it wonky, so you can actually clip through at specific angles. Hopefully, it slows them down. But they've got nothing to fight with now. Right, we're entering perhaps one of the laggiest fight in this game, but while I was practicing this, there was something I noticed. There is a strategy I literally developed that could save around about five around about five seconds potentially. Yet again, I normally shoot from distance. If I boost towards him, towards Mirage Dragon, and my accuracy is good. Which it was it was a little bit off there. That was, a decent, that was actually not a bad recovery. But you can see the concept. If I boost towards Mirage Dragon and I'm um, accurate enough, I could actually wipe that out four to five seconds. This game looks like it was made with pain. <laughs> so yeah, we've got Andros right where we want him. But... Speaking of the dagger remote... Halloween Frank KC. This guy looks like he's got some of that blood on him. Time for punishment. Oh, we got the quick wolf kill. That's another very recent strategy that, I've, that has been developed. Where if I boost the wolf and wipe him out quick enough, or basically get charge shots done quick enough, I can wipe him out four to five seconds quicker. 
for reference, the world record in this game is 10 minutes 45 seconds held by myself. Currently, the game could go under 10.30, but it require, would require a lot of RNG going my way and the correct planet set. Anyway, we're now into the final level. This is Andros's base. And I'm going to shield my way through the flames. You can actually defeat enemies whilst in this shield state. It's pretty much... I also have to switch these forms there for some reason. This is the laggiest room in the game as well, because you've got the flames there, you've got enemies shooting at you. There's a frame rate drop in half. I'm also going to kill this enemy here to see if we get bombs or not. What do we get? You get hearts. Ah, well, 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 well. I suppose that can be a fallback for Andros. Click through that. That means we have to take the longer route defeating Andros. Or getting past what I call the spike there. We've got to take out these spikes. But, but because we've got beefed up twin blasters, it should be fine. I'm just going to use one of my health things here. It actually fully heals you. But I've got to, I decide to use it here just as insurance before we face Andros. Which you may think... Wait, you may probably think, Wow, Andros was a pushover. It's not over yet. As a quick heads up, time will be coming up pretty soon. In around about the around about between 30 seconds and a minute and a half, depending on how well Andros treats me. Let's hope this goes well, because Andros RNG can be very, very fickle. So he can sometimes walk around a lot, or he can go with what well, not walk at all. I knew he was going to do that. I knew he was going to do that. That's the second warp again. Come on. Right, I'll save them. Time. 11.33. That's actually a very good time, actually. Anything sub-12 is a very, very good run. I'm really, really happy with that. Alrighty, anything you want to say to people at home? Um, all I can really say is check this game out, because there's not enough people that have experienced it. I mean, a lot of people said this game doesn't exist. A lot of people said, oh, it's in an incomplete state. Definitely give this game a try, because in my opinion, this is better than Star Fox 1. This is this has more replayability than Star Fox 1. And as a speedrun, it is my favourite speedrun, because it's you can play over and over and over again and have a different experience. And all I can really say is thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure sharing this game with everyone in chat this afternoon. And I hope everyone enjoys the rest of the marathon. Up next, I believe it is a friend. A yeah, we got Super Mario World. With one of my friends, Mebrams. Perfect. Thanks so much, Liam. It's been my pleasure.